Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start setting up our engine for lighting. So, to start off with, I'm going to create a new shader for lighting. And I'm going to start by just copying, whoops, not commenting, but copying all the code in our basic shader and moving that to our new shader for lighting, which is going to be called Fong Shader. Why Fong? Because this is going to be based on the Fong lighting model. So, I'm going to change this up a bit. I'm going to say Fong Shader. And there. Now, since Fong Shader, which extends Shader, now this should, if I just go on my game really quick and change this to Fong Shader .get instance, should do absolutely nothing. Good. So, in order to actually use our new Fong shader, we're going to want to change this to fongvertex.vs and fongfragment.fs. Those are going to be our new shader files for the Fong lighting model. And of course, the next step is to take our basic, whoops, our basic fragment and vertex shaders, copy them, and rename these to Fong fragment. That's what I called it, right? Yes. Fong fragment and Fong vertex. And I'm just going to take these and drag them into Notepad++ and change the language of each of these to GLSL. And these are going to be our new shaders. And really right now, the vertex shader does basically what I want. So I'm just going to not change anything there just yet. And I'm going to start with our fragment shader. And I guess to start off with, I'm going to change a few things around. Starting with this uniform, which I'm going to change to base color because that's no longer that's no longer going to be the absolute color. It's just going to be it's a sort of basic color, which could be changed by lighting. So yeah, I'm going to change it to base color. And I'm going to replace it where, oh dear, where I use it. And in here, I'm not going to assign to frag color directly. I'm going to do a whole bunch of different things in here, other than just testing the texture stuff. So I'm going to assign frag color at the very end, where, but to do that, I'm going to have to change this to something else, because I can't edit frag color right there if I want to do all that at the end. So instead, I'm going to create a vec4 called color, which I'm going to initialize to this. And I'm going to change this code around a bit. I'm going to say, if texture color is not equal to that, then I'm going to set color equal to texture color times color. So, actually, I think GLSL has times equal, so I can just do that. And there. And here at the very end, I'm going to say frag color is equal to color. And you might be wondering what the point of all that is. And the whole point of that is at the end, well, I guess not at the end, but at this, before I do all this, and actually, if that's the case, I can move this around and just make this right here, so I don't need that variable anymore. And actually, I might change my basic shader to this, too, because this seems a little bit cleaner to me. But anyways, point is, now that I've rearranged my fragment shader a little bit, it makes it very easy for me to do something like this. Create a vec4 I'll call total light, and just initialize that to vec4 0000 for now. So of course, it's going to do nothing. Actually, I'll set it to 1, 1, 1, 1 instead. But eventually, I'll be able to set that to something. And then at the very end, just multiply my color times the total light. And that's just a very, very easy way to do some basic lighting. So, now that we're here, why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to create a new uniform, Vector3, that I'll call Ambient Light. And what ambient light is, is it's just some constant light amount that's 
just apply it to everything. So think of it like this. If you look around your room or assume you're in some indoor part right, building or something right now, if you look around your room or whatever wherever you are, you'll notice that like the walls and the floors, they seem to have some amount of light even if the light isn't directly shining on it. And that's ambient light. I'll talk more about that in the companion video cuz yeah, ambient light's actually pretty important. And that's just going to be some constant value of colors applied to everything. And here, I'm just going to set total light equal to ambient light. And of course, I'm going to change this a bit later, so it incorporates more than just ambient light. And really, I think that's all I want to do with shaders right now. Just have ambient light, and that's it. So, there we go. Now this also means I'm going to need to change my code in here around a little bit. I'm going to change this to base color. I'm going to actually be set, well, actually set the base color. And I'm going to have a variable in my shader, at least for now. I may end up moving this into the rendering engine whenever we create that, but for now I'm just going to have it in the shader. It's going to be a private vector 3f ambient light. And I'm going to create a getter and setter for this. So, and actually I should make it a private static vector 3f, because this is going to apply to all of it, not just every individual instance. So yeah, that should be good. So yeah, there we go. Get and set, which I actually should have put at the end, but oh well. Get and set ambient light. So now, I have some way of actually setting this ambient light value. And in my game, I'm going to go ahead and do just that. In my... yeah, I'll do it in the update. Hmm, well, I'm not going to be changing it, so I'll just do it in the initialization. I'm going to do shader.set... Well, actually, it should be a non-static variable, shouldn't it? Oh well. So I'll just make it non-static. It's it's not like it particularly matters since this is a singleton, but just want to try and do this the best way I can. And there. Shader dot set ambient dot um What's going on here? Uh uh I see. So actually I do want this to be static. Because this is an instance of shader, not an instance of fong shader. So fong shader dot set ambient light to a new vector 3f of just 111. So now I just get normal ambient light. Now I'll set this the color of my material to normal right now. So there, now it should do absolutely nothing if we did it right. But no. And that's because I wrote my shader wrong. I need to make this a vec4 of ambient light, comma, 1. And there. Now it should run. But no. Failed undeclared identifier texture color. Where am I using that? Is it, it says line 16. If texture color... Ah! So that's why I had that variable. I completely forgot about that. So, okay. That's easy enough to fix, though. I have a vector 4 texture color. Set that equal to this. And then change it back. I don't know why I thought I'd get rid of that, but there. That should fix the error. And I see absolutely nothing. Excellent. So that means something's gone horribly wrong. One moment. And it might have something to do with the fact that I never actually set the uniform. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to set the uniform to ambient light ambient light. And of course I'm going to need to add this uniform. That's what I called it in here, right? Right. So add a uniform for ambient light and semicolon. And there. Now we have basic ambient lighting. Right now it's at maximum, so we see it just as if we had no lighting whatsoever. But what if I change this to something that I might realistically use? For example, Maybe just 0.2f, 0.2f, 0.2f. That's a realistic ambient light. Just some, you know, slight tinge to it. Well, 
that might be a little too much, so let's scale back on that just a little bit. Yeah, there we go, that's a little bit better. Enough that we can get a basic idea of what something is, if light isn't directly shining on it. So yeah, this is what our pyramid would look like if we had some light in our scene, but the light wasn't actually like directly hitting it. So this is sort of our way of simulating indirect lighting. It doesn't simulate more advanced indirect lighting, effect, indirect lighting effects, like shadowing, but it's a good approximation for most purposes. Because, you know, if I have a light on, it does illuminate the scene some, even if it isn't directly hitting it. And that's sort of the basis of our lighting. Right there. And this also stacks with, say, our coloring system. So I can color it, and still get the ambient light effect all around. So that's pretty nice. And with that, I believe, actually, I should move this up here. That just makes a little bit more sense. And yeah, I believe that's everything I want to do in this video. So I've got basic ambient lighting. It's, yeah, it's not much, but this is going to be a pretty good start for our new lighting system. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.